Honourable Minister Duncan, uh, Mr. Ule, Mr. Dugard, Dr. Rante, and Mr. Uh, Seymour. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome you to the, today's uh, event. I am Digvir Jayas, Vice President of Research and International here at the University of Manitoba. I am pleased to be your Master of Ceremony today for this very important announcement on behalf of uh, 61 institutions, 117 projects, and researchers from all across the country. So I am excited not just because the announcement is at the University of Manitoba, uh, for certainly for that reason, but also this is a, a celebration of the excellent science of many, many researchers from across the country. So, uh, and I thank CFI for giving me the opportunity to represent uh, 97 vice president research and uh, some uh, uh, close to 5,000 researchers who are going to benefit from this funding. Uh, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the University of Manitoba campuses are located on original lands of Anisna Bay, Cree, Ozi Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with indigenous community, communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. At this time, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to note our speakers today. Honorable Minister uh, Duncan, Minister of Science, uh, Mr. Ro uh, Robert Falcon Ule, Member of Parliament for Winnipeg Centre, Mr. Terry Dugard, Parliament Secretary on the Status of Women and Member of Parliament for Winnipeg South, Dr. Rosen Rante, President and CEO uh, for the Canada Foundation for Innovation, Dr. Malcolm Zing, Associate Professor in both Faculty of Engineering and Ready Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Manitoba. At the University of Manitoba, partnerships are of primary importance to us. Working collaboratively with our partners, we find solutions to real-world problems across the disciplinary boundaries, and through research, we create new and successful approaches. Please join me in welcoming one of our most important partners in achieving success here at the University, our Member of Parliament for Winnipeg Centre, Dr. Robert Falcon Ule. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to be here today, and thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much Dr. J.S., uh, for your introduction and hosting today's events. Uh, here at the University of Manitoba. It, uh, it is my old uh, uh, workplace where I was a researcher as well with the Shirk Grant, uh, one of the Insight Grants. And so it's as, as a former researcher and now a politician, it's, it's great pleasure to be back uh, on uh, you know, a, welcoming, a welcoming place and territory. Anyways, it's great to belong to a government that understands and values science and research. Unlike the previous government, we want to hear what scientists like you have to say. We need the evidence that you produce to make sound policy decisions. Decisions about the things that Canadians care about most, our health, our safety, families, our environment, our economy, communities, and our future prosperity. We get that by investing in the spaces that scientists need, particularly the next generation of scientists. We are investing in the very places where people will shape the future, our future, our common future, for the better. And I'm so pleased to have the job and the pleasure of introducing Canada's Minister of Science, Kirsty Duncan. And she knows this better than anyone about the value of science. Minister Duncan has been the driving force for putting science front and center in our government's agenda. For example, she worked hard to increase our investment in fundamental science. It was the largest investment in research in over a decade. That's incredible. And I, th I thank you very much, Kirsty, for that. Our government also launched an independent review panel charged with making sure our federal support for science is doing the best it can. And further, the government committed to a science-based decision making, where you recently joined the Prime Minister to announce our new Chief of Science Advisor. 
The minister is also leading a campaign to encourage more young people, particularly young women and indigenous youth, to consider a career in the STEM fields. It is clear that these and many other accomplishments that our Minister of Science has a tireless champion of science and research in Canada. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'll stop talking. Please join me in welcoming the Honourable Mrs. Uh, Ms. Duncan. She asked me to do one sentence, and uh, there's so many accomplishments we've done in, in such a short period of time, in two years, that it was really important that I mention them, because sometimes people forget where we were and where we're going. And so, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and what an honor to be here at the university this morning. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. C'est un plaisir d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui. My thanks to my dear friend and colleague, uh, Robert Falcon Willett. We are so glad to have you as part of our team. Thank you for your research in your previous life. And also, I'd like to acknowledge my longtime friend who we did work with together many years ago. Um, Terry Dugut and Digvir, Vice President, thank you for hosting us here today and I'd really like to express my gratitude to you, to the faculty, staff and the students for hosting today's announcement and of course I would like to recognize uh, Dr. Roseanne Runte who is the new head President and CEO of Canada Foundation for Innovation and a former university president in her own right. <laughs> Let me acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis people. It is an honour to be here to discuss world-leading Canadian science and the people who make it happen. One of the best ways the government supports leading research is through the Canada Foundation for Innovation's 2017 Innovation Fund. The fund invests in research where Canada is competitive on the global stage. I'm talking about areas like Arctic research, digital technologies, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, to name just a few. The fund challenges Canadian universities, colleges, and research hospitals to tackle the biggest issues facing us today and take their research to the next level. Perhaps best of all, it encourages collaborations across disciplines, institutions, and sectors, both national and international. C'est réellement la science Limit. Elle a le potentiel illimité de transformer la façon dont nous vivons, travaillons et jouons. That's why today I'm pleased to announce the winners of this year's Innovation Fund competition. As you've heard, $554 million being invested in 117 new research infrastructure projects at 61 institutions. This is a good day for science. Here at the University of Manitoba, the fund will offer $1.2 million for new labs and research tools. And at the University of Winnipeg, a few blocks away, where I visited this morning, they will receive $3 million for their projects. Congratulations! And I'd like to, this really is a day for celebration. It's a day to celebrate our extraordinary researchers here in Winnipeg and across the country. Thank you for the work you do. It matters profoundly. I'd like to extend 
a special congratulations to Dr. Malcolm Shing, who heads up one of the University of Manitoba projects. He and his team work in the exciting field of biomedical engineering and nanomedicine. The funding support he receives will allow him to use state-of-the-art equipment to develop drug-loaded nanoparticles that can target tumor cells. He will also be able to engineer 3D printed nanocomposites for skin grafts that can be used to treat painful diabetic skin ulcers. Dr. Xing, if I could have you stand and if I could have all the researchers who are being acknowledged, who are being awarded today stand so that we can acknowledge your contributions. Dr. Xing, it's really something to see your work have such a direct and meaningful impact on people's lives and their health. I want you to know our government's ongoing support for science was evident through two budgets. We've seen billions invested in research infrastructure and our institutions from coast to coast to coast. Part of that funding included the largest annual investment in the three federal granting councils in a decade. Nos investissements s'ajoutent aux mesures que je prends pour renforcer les sciences au Canada. As many of you know, I commissioned a review of federal funding for fundamental science, the first of its kind in 40 years. I'm pleased to say I am now implementing many of the recommendations made by the Distinguished Review Panel. That includes thinking about how we support early career researchers, multidisciplinary, multinational, high-risk, high-reward research. It means a continued emphasis on equity and diversity and better coordination and governance across the funding system. And just two weeks ago, we made good on our promise to appoint a new Chief Science Advisor for Canada. Dr. Mona Niemer, I don't have to tell you, is a highly accomplished medical researcher, a university executive, and now she is Canada's top scientist. Do Dr. Niemer will gather and provide expert and impartial scientific advice to our government. Science, in other words, will be part of the mix of economic, social, health, gender, diversity evidence that we rely on to inform our decisions. The decisions that protect the health and safety of Canadians and grow the economy. I hope you feel that great things are happening in Canadian science. And I'm working, I want to assure you, I'm working every day to help bring your discoveries to Canadians. Let me finish once again by offering my heartfelt, sincere congratulations to all our competition winners for the groundbreaking work you do every day. Merci, thank you. Well, good morning, friends. Uh, good morning, friends of science. Uh, what a great day for science. And uh, on your behalf, on behalf of uh, all of us uh, gathered, I'd like to uh, thank my favorite scientist and my longtime friend, Kirsty Duncan, our Minister of Science, uh, for the great news that she brings us today. So uh, we've been clapping a lot today. Let's give the, the Minister another big round of applause. Might I also add that it's great to see my friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Robert uh, falcon uh, uh along with all of the researchers and students that are gathered here today uh, for today's uh, announcement. Uh, as Robert uh, mentioned, uh, 
he has been part of the U of M family. And Robert, uh, you're back with your old teammates again, so it's, uh, it's great to see you. And I, of course, uh, represent the Fort Garry campus of the University of Manitoba, an incredible uh, campus, uh, the beating heart of, of my riding. Um, 35,000 people moving in and out every day, uh, professors, faculty, uh, students, support staff, and it's an amazing institution having minister a billion dollar impact on our local economy. So a very significant institution uh, indeed. And uh, not to give the University of Winnipeg short shrift, where I worked just a short time ago with uh, our good friend uh, Lloyd Axworthy. So we're, we're very, very blessed to have excellent universities in our community. And to echo the sentiments we've heard here today, we understand that science plays an important part in building our future, and I think some of you have heard me say before, uh, the science of today is the economy of tomorrow. And look around, and virtually everything that surrounded us, uh, surrounds us started in the minds of a scientist. Scientists are behind the long-lasting LED lights that are above us now. Researchers worked in their labs for years and years to build the components that are now powering the smartphones that we're using to tweet or Facebook uh, today's announcement. We're so very grateful to all of the scientists who continue to be curious, uh, to ask questions, and to chase the answer no matter the obstacles in their way. And we're committed uh, as a government to providing you with the tools and spaces you need to succeed. That's why we're here today, to celebrate scientists and to make sure there is nothing stopping them from being as ambitious as you can be. Thank you again, Minister, for uh, gracing us with your presence uh, today, and thank you to our researchers, students, and thank you all for coming. Thanks so much. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Mr. Ulay and uh, Minister Duncan, thank you very much for this wonderful news and please join me in extending 554 million thanks to Minister Duncan. <laughs> I would now like to introduce the new President and CEO of the Canada Foundation for Innovation, Dr. Rosanne Zante. Prior to joining uh, the CFI on August 1st, 2017, Dr. Rante served as a president and vice chancellor of Carleton University in Ottawa since 2008. During her tenure, she was instrumental in expanding science and engineering by 70% and in supporting and in supporting critical infrastructure investments in areas such as energy, aerospace, health sciences and physics. She is a highly accomplished academic in the field of French comparative literature, economic, and cultural development. We are honored to have you here uh, this, for this announcement. Dr. Rante, please come forward. Thank you, Dr. Jayad, and thank all of your colleagues for making us welcome and being the center of Canada for this great announcement. On vous remercie de la belle journée, belle journée d'automne, mais une belle journée pour la science, pour les scientifiques, pour les chercheurs et pour les étudiants. J'adore vos t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and today is a fantastic day for Canada and I thank Minister Duncan for all she does. She is a scientist, a, po a political leader, but she's a passionate believer in what we do. And this is really important. Because we like to say today is Canada's day. Today is Canada's day in the world. But if it is Canada's day in the world, it's because of science, because of the great minds that you represent, because of the great work that you do, and the problems you will solve for the future. Minister Duncan, thank you for your leadership and your passion. More than 554 million times, thank you. And I thank our members of Parliament for their support and their gifts. The money would not be there if it weren't for the Canadian government. Thank you for this investment. Ian Seymour is here today. 
He represents the board. He's right, right there in the second row. Uh, he represents the board of the Canada Foundation for Innovation. And as you know, the foundation works with researchers, colleagues, peer assessors from around the world. A very rigorous process of evaluation is done. Three levels of committees, and they finally go to our volunteer board who carefully reviews them and supports them. Dr. Seymour, thank you for all the volunteers and your great work. We're really privileged to have you there and have that. Now, the minister said there were 117 projects, and we are really proud of that. But you know, there are 133 collaborations. And to me, that's even more important because researchers are not working by themselves. They're working together across provinces and across the country. Um, today, Dr. Martin is working with the University of British Columbia and the University of Northern British Columbia in his COOL project. Now, I call it COOL, but I should say super cool because it's not even super cool. It's super cold neutron timing in a moment of time that's going to tell us one of the secrets of the universe and why we have asymmetrical particles that appear to be differently charged, if I got it right. Thank you so much, Dr. Martin. <laughs> and if you look at what Dr. Shin and Dr. Hicks and Dr. Wilson are doing, it is inspiring for the future, the future of our health, the future of our communities and in the last two months I've gone right across Canada to visit the investments that we've made in research across the country and it is truly impressive the facilities are extraordinary the changes that they've made to our communities are profound the mayors of the cities tell me their towns would not be what they are without the investment in research and science. Companies tell us they wouldn't have the employees that they have were it not for the highly trained researchers. But you know, it's really about the students. And when I go across the country and I see people that are so passionate about the future, it just makes my heart happy and warm. And when I ask them, why are you doing this? They don't say to me, I'm doing this because it's a required course. They don't tell me they're doing it because they want a job. They tell me they want to change the world. They want a better future. And I believe in them. And today, we're looking at Canada's 150th anniversary, and we celebrate all that Canada has done in the past. But the biggest gift that we can give Canada for the 150th anniversary is our investment in the future generation. So, so congratulations to you. I thank the government for allowing us to invest in the labs and the equipment, the buildings that will make the new generation of Canadians capable of serving the world and that will bring the leaders from around the world to Canada. Because after all, we need to put a roof over their heads in this snowy climate. So thank you so much. Students, we have a little contest. It's hashtag I am innovation, uh, hashtag je suis innovation. Just enter any time you wish between now and the end of the month and you might win an exciting prize and tell us why you are innovative, why you're doing what you're doing. Let, help us collect those stories to tell the rest of the world. Thank you very much, Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dante. And please uh, join me in uh, thanking Minister Duncan and Dr. Rante again for this investment in the research across the country. I, I want to extend my personal congratulations to the researchers from University of Manitoba, from University of Winnipeg, and from the researchers from all uh, universities across Canada 
who have received their funding, uh, funding today through this particular program. University of Manitoba uh, has 140 years uh, legacy uh, of, uh, in our province in research, scholarly works and creative activities. This new funding continues that tradition. Dr. Zing's research joins medicine with engineering, create life-changing technologies that will impact treatment and patient care for all Canadians. Dr. Steffi Baum and Christopher O.D. in physics and astronomy in Faculty of Science are collaborators with the University of Toronto on the project's titled Unlocking the Radio Sky with Next Generation Survey Astronomy. Dr. Andrew uh, Fredrickson in Geological Sciences in the Clayton H. Riddell Faculty of Environment, Earth and Resources is collaborating with Dalhousie University on a national facility for seismic uh, imaging. Dr. Evelyn Forge and many researchers at the University of Manitoba will benefit from the data access on the project being led by McMaster University titled the CRDN, CRDCN Transition to High Performance Computing Liberating Data for Research and Policy. And as I mentioned, uh, I also want to congratulate Dr. Jeffrey Martin, project lead from the University of Winnipeg, who is here today uh, on his project, which collaborated with UBC, University of Northern, uh, Northern Britain's Columbia, as well as Triumph, the National uh, Physics and Par uh, Particle Physics and Nuclear Medicine uh, Lab. In our complicated world today, working together to find solutions is essential for our success as a nation. This investment by government of Canada to 61 institutions across the country, from small colleges to large U15 research intensive universities, allows Canada's best investigators to do cutting edge research in many areas of study and to continue to be leaders in their fields. It also enhances the educational experience and training opportunities for students across Canada. Our next speaker is one of the recipients of today's funding, Dr. Malcolm Zing. Dr. Zing joined uh, us here at the University of Manitoba in 2014. He is an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, and the Department of Biochemistry and Medical Genetics in the Max Ready College of Medicine Ready Faculty of Health Sciences. He is also a principal investigator at the Children's Hospital Research Institute of Manitoba, a research partner of the University of Manitoba. His research focuses on the development of nanotechnology and biomaterials for tissue engineering and nanomedicine. Please join Dr. Zeng. First, uh, thanks to Dr. Uh, Digavajas for uh, introduction. Good morning. Uh, thanks for inviting me and uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the funding and the impact on our programs and the society. Uh, so first, on behalf of the researchers at the University of Manitoba receiving funding and all the researchers for CFR funding for all Canada, we thank the Government of Canada and the Canada Foundation for Innovation for the funding to support all research programs. CFI offers us the tools we need to expand our research boundaries for a big innovation. The funding creates synergy to enable an accelerated and expanded capacity for research in the field of engineering, science, medicine, and even arts. The infrastructure will be a great boost for the groups to strengthen exi uh, existing, existing collaborations and explore further national and international collaborative works. The facility will also greatly enhance high qualified personal HQP training, not only in Canada, but also in the world. These tools will become essential for training at this HQP with skills in R&D and academics. 
it is expected that the funding will attract more HQP to the research program by providing more research opportunities and skills training. We believe the CFI and its funding will continually contribute to achieving scientific, social, and economic growth for our community and our country. So finally, I would like to end with uh, English creator and intellectual. Thomas Ferris words, knowledge is a treasure, but practice is the key to it. So thanks again for CFI and the government to support the tools for us to practice and make our life better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Zing. I would uh, once again want to uh, extend sincere thanks to Minister Duncan, uh, Government of Canada, and Dr. Rante for this uh, continued partnership and support. So thank you very much. <laughs> Canada Foundation for Innovation Grants, as all of you are aware, are the partnership grants. So these uh, grants do have other partners. And I certainly want to extend thanks to all the provinces who partner with the CFI grants and many, many other organizations.